Okay, well, welcome again to our uh, traditional Wednesdays uh, seminars that we have been hosting uh, for a few weeks now, consistently on a weekly basis. And we started um, with lives on uh, Monday in Spanish and Fridays in English starting this week, same time, 2.30. Uh, so I want to thank all of you that have been uh, connecting with us over the last uh, few days, sharing. We had an overwhelming response on Monday, so thank you so much for sharing, liking, commenting, sending us messages. It's all good. So today we have a very special uh, guest, and we're going to be talking about a topic that is extremely important for small businesses uh, that have employees. And we're going to be talking to a professional employer organization, JobFit. And we have the pleasure of having the founder and CEO of uh, JobFit joining us today. Welcome. Hi, how are you? How are you? Carlos, Good Juan afternoon. Carlos. How are you doing, Juan Carlos? Fine, thank you. And you? Thank you for the invite. No, thank you. Um, Joffit is one of the newest members of the uh, U.S. Business Association of E-Commerce. And Juan Carlos uh, happens to have a program that tailors, you know, Hispanic-owned businesses. So it's the content that he's going to be presenting today. Uh, it's going to resonate with a lot of you guys. So uh, stay tuned. And before we start the presentation, I would like Juan Carlos to introduce himself, give us a little background. So you guys get to know him, you know, that we try to make things very uh, or as personal as we can here. It's part of Perfect. the uh, philosophy of the of the association. So Juan Carlos, welcome and the stage is yours. I'm going to put up your first slide and you let me know when to start, okay? Thank you so much. So good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes a todos. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Juan Carlos Briseño. I was invited by Taide to participate. Um, with the association, I'm very proud to represent Jobfit HR. I'm the CEO for the company in the United States. And well, today's discussion has to do with payroll, payroll services. You know, my, my background is in project management. I'm a certified project manager. And uh, prior to being here, I worked, uh, you know, uh, 10 years with DHL back in Mexico. Then here in the United States in 2009 in the private sector, um, opening up divisions for different companies. So, you know, based on what I've seen in project management, mainly risk management and resource matrix and assigning resources and effort within the companies. One thing that I've always noticed is how crucial it is to take a very quick and, and detailed look at how do you deal with your employees within the company? Are you truly managing the payroll correctly? Are you truly managing the development of the careers for all your employees? Are they staying with you? Are, re, are you retaining talent? Or they just use you as a stepping stone to go elsewhere? So this is something that I was always interested me. And now I have the opportunity to expand JobKit HR in the United States. In essence, we are a payroll services company. We manage payroll and we manage human capital, not only wages, salaries, and taxes, but also for the employer, for the company, for the restaurant, for the owner. How do you manage the benefits that you showcase to your employees? And also, how do you manage your own risk? You know, workers' compensation, that liability that an employer has with its employees if something would happen. So, um, Tade, if it's okay with you, I think uh, that I have, uh, you know, a couple of uh, minutes in order to present and share a couple of slides so that I can showcase exactly what we're uh, discussing here. Perfect. Go ahead, Juan Carlos. Thank you. So um, next, please. This is just uh, a quick agenda of what I want to show you. Um, again, I'm going to take a couple of minutes on this um, to review, you know, what's the current environment regarding payroll in the United States? Why is it essential? And why are we saying that now it is not a commodity to have this type of service, but a necessity? Partnering with Jaffit HR, what is the solution and the type of solutions that we offer? And again, this is open to any type of payroll services company. I will be just be showcasing exactly what we do. 
and also leveraging the technology and you know what is the implementation process once you come with us or once you um, decide to have a payroll services company service your company um, next please next so this is what mainly payroll services um, include it includes on one aspect of things compliance and risk management and just let me give you an example imagine that you're at your restaurant imagine that you're the owner of an agricultural uh, company in california for example let's imagine that you have 50 employees what happens today right now as we speak if one of them has an incident of one of them has an accident most of the states in the united states require that you have a workers compensation policy and if you don't you're in huge liability and huge risk so for one part if that state requires it and you don't have it you can be liable to many penalties but if you do have it in that state um, are you paying a premium that is linked directly and correlated to specifically the business that you have or let's just say that you're paying a premium imagine like an auto insurance for a ferrari when you truly only have a jetta a volkswagen jetta are you truly paying the premium that you need to pay or are you overpaying also the other thing that we can focus on is growth and savings it has been said that, and this is a phrase that I like to say it, uh, just like I did, like you said, just keeping it uh, informal. Imagine that you have a Frankenstein, that on one side, you manage payroll with a software online. On another silo, you have benefits that you went to the open market and quoted with health insurance companies. And finally, you have your workers' compensation that you got from a broker, someone that you didn't know, someone that referred you to him or her. That is what I call having a Frankenstein solution, that you have different silos for different aspects of managing your human capital. The problem is that that is not the most cost effective way of doing things because you're not leveraging the information, the processes and the connectivity between the people that manage each one of them. Also, uh, the third aspect that you can see on this slide, value and purchasing power. This is exactly what happens when you have a lower HR spend through integrated processes. And finally, obviously, it has to do with human resources support and guidance. Once you have a company like us, which is a PEO services company, what happens is that you have an entire human resources team with different specialties and with subject matter experts for each one of the topics that has to do with managing your people and your employees in the company. I will show you later on another slide, another benefit that is huge, which has to do with which are in fact the benefits that you can offer your employees. And with that, you are able to retain talent. One of the key examples has to do with healthcare. Many companies choose to pay a percentage of healthcare insurance for their employees, either HMO or PPO, or some just, you know, it's not a benefit that they offer and the employees come to work with you, but each one of them pays for their own insurance. Regardless of the case, what happens when you have a PEO company servicing you, you are able to go in to a master policy that has been negotiated by us with the main providers on that city, that state. And what happens then is that either you pay for part, a percentage of that insurance for your employees, or the employees pay for it fully, but they have access and you have access to different rates because we have multi-year uh, deals with these providers and that means lower premium. Next, please. So obviously all the rewards that you can get for this type of partnership is just having everything linked, benefits, savings, personnel, which is attract and retain talent. And we also do staffing, recruiting and hiring, time and attendance. Sometimes maybe you have a restaurant and maybe you need to, to have them check in, check out with clocks and with biometrics. We can also manage that. And the most important aspect uh, that has to do with risk is the liability, the compliance, incidents, accidents, and everything that can happen in any type of business. Next, next please. Next, please.
So let me just share with you who we are. We are the third largest payroll services company in the United States. Um, it is a big enterprise that has 28 different divisions, and I manage one of those divisions called Jobbit HR. Uh, we do four billion in annual payroll, and we process all that payroll by every single year. And the company was founded in 2004. This division comes in to this huge partnership of 28 just two years ago. And we currently manage um, this number has now jumped to more than 400,000 payrolls that we manage throughout the United States. And I might share with you now that we have a very aggressive acquisition um, strategy for the remaining uh, part of this year and 2022 which will take us to December 2022, becoming the largest PEO service company and payroll services company in the United States, surpassing number one ADP and number two, Trinet. Next, please. And this is just an example of the vast uh, reach and, um, you know, access that you might have to services with us, with all the divisions in place. All of the dots that you see here and all the names are names of different divisions of the 28 divisions that we have within um, the enterprise. And Jaffet HR is one of them. Uh, we utilize all the offices throughout and we can offer services in every single city, every single state, every single zip code in the United States. Next. And just to showcase, these are some of the partners. You can see their Humana. You can see their different healthcare insurance companies like Zurich. And we also, on talking about benefits like Staples, like Solvo, like different benefits that we can offer, it is not only healthcare insurance. Once you become part of our service, there are many different benefits that an employee would just log into their portal and would see all the different benefits that I can uh, take advantage of. Just to give you an example, just imagine that you just go to your website, you go to your portal, you plug in your zip code. And once you plug in your zip code, a life map comes up and you will see pins and little dots, different colors without within that map surrounding your zip code within your zip code showing you benefits and discounts that you might have at restaurants that you might have at hospitals that you might have at auto um, auto rentals that you might have at fitness centers so the benefits are best and that is something that you would have access and your employees would have access once we're managing the payroll for uh, your inc your llc your corporation next please and you know peo which means uh, professional employer organization, is what we call the entire package bundle of capital management, of managing your resources and your employees. And that includes wages, salaries, taxes, benefits, and workers' comp. Now, if you take all those and you just dissect them, these are the different concepts where we go in and we help out. Payroll, employee benefits, HR tools and support, compliance obligations, risk and safety management, recruiting, hiring, workers' compensation, training and development. So just imagine, and, and here's where I would like to start, you know, this, you know, uh, webinar conversation with you. And remember to send your questions. You can type your questions and they will be able to, to share them with us um, at the end of the presentation and we could answer all those questions. But just, let's just do a quick exercise. Imagine in your company, and, and just think, um, how much do you spend in time, money, and effort, and resources in managing your employees? How many people, how many executives do you have dedicated within your company in order to manage wages, salaries, taxes, anything that happens within the company? Sometimes maybe it's only yourself. Sometimes it's someone from a member of your family, someone that is in human resources, your controller, your director in uh, finance. Maybe it's just a supervisor that you have, you know, assigned to manage everything that they have to do in order to get all your employees to speed, to get them trained, to get them uploaded into, you know, the payroll uh, process. 
just just think to yourself how much do you truly spend today on managing all the different silos and all the different processes and activities and in the next slide next please here's where i like to showcase everything that has to be managed as you can see right there on your left hand side this is what you as an employer since the 1900s and then the 40s the 80s and present date every single one of those abbreviations represents a specific process or activity that implies and includes specific reports specific filings and specific penalties if they are not completed on time and in the right way all those processes all those abbreviations that you see there what happens is from the employer they get transposed and they get transferred to jocket hr to us and all of those things are performed by our teams. We have different teams, different silos for each one of the concepts regarding you know, payroll, taxes, benefits, workers' comp, and they consolidate all the different activities that are needed in order to comply with regulatory frameworks at the city, at the state, and federal regulations as well. So imagine everything that you see right there on your left-hand side just being transferred to the PEO company, which is us. Next. Now, this is important. How, let's just assume that you wanna do this. Let's just assume that you just want to truly upgrade your human capital management process within your company. How would you do that? How would you present that to the board? How would you present that to the owners? How would you present that to your, par uh, to, to your uh, partner? How would you truly sell and say, okay, where does this fit? Where are we going to put Jocket HR within our org chart so that they can be reporting back to us exactly what's happening? There are two uh, solutions for that. Number one is what you see right here. There is your company on the top. And then you have your functional area, VPs, directors, supervisors, leaders. One of the things that can happen is that you place Jocket HR and then you have the different silos reporting to Jaffit HR. But again, this is not something like um, that people have to be placed within Jaffit HR. It's just as an org chart and it's just for reporting uh, purposes. But you can have Jaffit HR managing all those silos and all those resources within your company from the outside and just feeding them the information that they need. And, and then Jaffit HR reporting to you uh, from the outside with all the information that you need. Now, let me show you the example number two. Uh, next slide, please. Which is tagging and putting Jopit HR right below your human resources leader within the company. And that way, all the information that is fed to the owner, to the CEO of your company, to yourself, it is fed by your own people, by your human resources leader. So we can do both things. We can have your human resources leader feeding to the owner, to the CEO, all the information and the aspects of managing the human capital in the company. Or we can have all those processes managed and having being fed to the human resources leader, which in turn feeds that to yourself, to you, to the CEO of the company. Again, this is just a visual representation. It doesn't mean that job fit HR goes within your company. It just, mean, just means that all the abbreviations and the silos that we saw in the previous slide are managed and are executed by us. And all we do is we send you all the reports when things happen. Next, please. Next, please. So just to summarize and recap, what is it that we can do for the company? Just look at payroll and payroll tax processing. We manage everything. We manage process of the checks and direct deposits if needed, the tax filings, PTO tracking. I mean, you can read it yourself right there, wage and hour compliance, time and attendance, everything that has to do with the general ledger. All of that is managed by us instead of having someone within your company that has to be assigned and all the funds that you have to spend to have someone just doing all of those activities and it's the same thing on the right hand side with administration and consulting you know horizon plan employee handbooks we can manage everything that has to do with e-verify with hiring support including applicant tracking uh, everything that has to do with discrimination training and everything that has to do with policies and procedures 
if we go to the lower left hand side of the slide everything that has to do with employee medical and related benefits everything with healthcare and by the way another example of the benefits that you might have and be offering uh, start to offer to your employees there is something that we call md life m as in mother d as in david life which means you can have a physician and you can have a consultation online through facetime through video conference with a physician at a very very low rate cents to the dollar um in order to you know have a consultation and have some prescription pills if needed prior to going to a full-on uh face-to-face -face consultation if needed but that's called md life and that's something that we also offer and finally workers compensation coverage claims and i was sharing with Taide the other day just to give you a very clear example of what it means to be liable and what it means to be able to mitigate risk with someone that offers a PO service like us. There was a company in Florida that one of the employees uh, at the office fell and broke a leg, uh, unfortunately, and had to go to the hospital. Now, this company was up and coming. It was just two partners. They didn't know about workers' compensation. They didn't study about it. They were not business executives. They just had an idea, hired people, and then they found themselves in the situation of having someone in the hospital close to suing the company because there was an issue with the steps, and that's the reason why this executive fell. And she was a bit overweight, so that's the reason why she broke the leg. Um, it was it was a, a, a significant fall. And this executive was planning on suing. Now, I don't know if you're, you know, uh, um, aware of how much can someone, a company be sued if there is a situation with a facility and someone has a physical um, uh, consequence, but it goes into the millions. And based on this company starting their operations this year, it was just it was just going to consume completely and fully all the revenue that they could generate in 2021. Now, fortunately, this uh, employee didn't sue. Uh, she's doing better. She will be back at work in about a couple of weeks. But the example and the reason why I'm telling you all this is would this company had workers compensation that they have hired and a, a, a broker at least to find the workers compensation company and you know get their policy they would be paying a deductible it is exactly just how you know auto insurance works if you crash if you have an accident it's different paying for the entire accident and also if you hurt someone rather than having insurance and just paying a deductible it is exactly the same process and the same aspect and that's the reason why when you go to the open market to quote a workers compensation policy the amount can be very significant. Whereas if you come with a PEO solution company and we manage your payroll, we can get you a policy, a workers' compensation policy and a premium that is highly competitive and a lot less of a cost for you as, as the owner of the company, CEO of the company, because we currently manage many employees and we have many deals with many companies. So we were able to sign and to get multi-annual deals with workers' compensation companies that offer all those policies throughout the United States. So, you know, this is just an example to show you that the liability, once you have employees and at least one, it goes from one employee to as many as you might have, there is a specific liability and risk that you have to go through and that you accept once you hire someone. If you have workers' compensation policy through a PEO service, corporation, what happens is that you have the best rate and you're always covered. If this associate would have uh, sued, the company didn't shouldn't have dealt with her. It would have been us dealing with her, managing the process and getting everything resolved. Um, next, please, Taide. And again, you know, this is just an example of what can happen within the marketplace, uh, within the employee and the employer portal the marketplace has to do with options and benefits that you can um, have access to as an employer once you, we are able to service you it has to do with risk management health financial 
small, small term business loan services. So just to give you an example, we helped all our customers, all our clients, current clients with the PPP loans. Some of them didn't know if they were able to apply to those and we were able to help them and guide them and walk them throughout the process. But not only to apply to the PPP loan, but also to submit all the documentation that's needed for the for forgiveness of the PPP loan. And we're able to help out with those things as well. Next, please. Next, please. And this is just an example of what happens with our platforms. Um, as you know, everything is going online. Everything has to do with how do you lever leverage technology. Currently, due to the pandemic, many of our clients, their employees have gone home and are working remotely. So being able to access all the information through you know, efficient, high-tech portals, it is key. And that's the reason why we have developed all these portals for the employee for the employer so that they can access all the information through any type of computer, any type of laptop, and even it is mobile friendly as well. So just imagine that you as an employee, suddenly they send you a login information, your password, you go into a portal, and just with a couple of clicks, you can see each one of your pay stubs, you can download your W-2s for each one of your years. You can see what is your time and attendance and how many hours you have been working per, per week. You can see your vacation, your pay time off. You can see all the discounts and benefits that you can have per zip code. You can ask questions to, to your human, rep, a human resource representative that can answer any questions about your pay stuff. So what I'm trying to showcase here is that the interaction is completely different. It is not like you having a question, sending out an email to you don't know who, you have no idea when they're gonna respond. You're asking for your pay stops through email. You have to get them through mail, but one of them got lost. Everything stays on one single place. Everything is organized and everything is right there for you whenever you need it. Next, please. And you know, just for the employer, uh, which is you right here on the call, this is crucial. Once you log into your portal as the employer, the CEO, the owner, you can grant access to anyone that you would like within your company. And what they see are reports that they can choose, pick and choose from the ones that we currently have there as default, or they can request different reports and they can even create the reports within the portal. Let's just assume that they have different functional areas. And in one report, they wanna see what is the entire payroll for all functional areas together for the past six months, they can do that. Let's just assume that they want to split up two teams within the finance department, within the operations department, and they wanna see what the, what's the expense of each one of those different sub teams within operations, they can also do that. And everything is within the system and all those reports are accessible to them. Next, please. This is the same information just from payroll and PTO. The benefits and birthdays, Beficient gives you the power to pull a wide range of reports anytime you need them. Next, please. And again, regarding the benefits, this is just an example, as you can see on the iPhone in this case. It is mobile friendly. It is not only restricted to Apple devices. Um, it could be any type of smartphone and you would have access to reporting benefits and connecting with a company and human resources. Next, please. And again, uh, you can easily manage onboarding. This is great. And this just happened uh, with a restaurant. What you can do is you, let's just assume that we start managing the payroll, the benefits and workers comp for a restaurant. Let's assume that you have a restaurant and we bring on board the 50 employees that you have within your restaurant. Then the following week, two of them leave the company and then you have to hire two replacements and then you're expanding a bit and you're hiring two other chefs. Let's assume that you're doing that. How do you do the onboarding? It is very simple. You just go to your portal and you just have people in human resources, the people assigned within your company, upload the information and onboard the new resources, gathering all the information right there in the portal and immediately they are within the payroll structure and they will be included in the payroll cycle, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly or monthly. 
So all the processes that you can think of, there's nothing that you have to do paper-based. Everything can be done in the portal, and this creates a lot of efficiencies, and you would be spending less time, less effort, and less funds devoting and assigning people to doing this process manually. Next, please. And you know, this is this is important. Um, a partnership with, with a company like us means that you'll have access to a very comprehensive human resource service offering. You know, and, and, and personal that manage every type of silo, every type of functional area within human resources. So let's just say that you are being um, subsidized. You're being supported by an entire and huge team of consultants. Let's put it that way that are helping you manage every aspect within human resources. And one of the most important things these days is attracting, but also retaining talent. Sometimes um, some of our employees might go to the competition just for a $20 increase in pay. How can you manage that? How can you manage training people? Because it's very frustrating when you once you train your employees and suddenly they just use you, like I mentioned at the beginning of the call, as a stepping stone just to go elsewhere for $20 increase in pay. How can you avoid that if, if the pricing and, and the wages and salaries in your industry is very elastic? The only way to do that is to retain them through different things, through things that are um, you know, benefits and solutions to their personal lives that they cannot get somewhere else. And that's the way the best way to do that is to have access to that with someone that offers all those opportunities. When you have a PEO service company, what happens is that we already have deals with many different corporations so that we can add value to everyone that joins the company. Next, please. And this is just an example, and I'm just using $5,000 there as an example. This is, if you go to the left-hand side, this is a two to four week process in order to be able to have the company and all the information uploaded and us managing the payroll. So all the way to the top, you sign the agreement, then you assign an implementation team, then you collect all the data that's needed in order to upload it to the system. You build the benefit enrollment elections and you conduct the meetings that have to do with enrollment to benefits. You set up the employee files, you run a test, and then we're live. And all the all this process we can manage in two to four weeks. What you see on the right hand side is a joint to do list, and there is almost always a one time flat rate implementation fee. Now I have some great news for everyone um, here in the webinar. Currently, due to the pandemic, that number we have waived for many of our customers, new customers, just because we truly understand and respect the processes that are going on, um, you know, in the past couple of years and still going on in 2021. So this is an example of what we usually do. There's a $5,000 investment in order to implement, you know, the new PEO service, but that's something that can always be negotiated once, excuse me, we take a look at the numbers and we take a look at the proposal uh, once we're doing that in, in, in a uh, follow-up meeting. Next, please. And again, you know, this is what we usually do. We do the initial meeting, data collection, analysis, deeper dive, and the agreements. And as you can see, we have dates and we put their insert date. This is, and I'm sharing with you precisely the, the presentation and the slides that we share with our prospects, with our future clients. And we showcase this slide in particular in the meeting because we, with them, want to plug in the dates. We want to make sure that there is a commitment and due dates, just following project management, so that we don't, you know, miss out on the opportunity of having a very efficient uh, process that we continue with the momentum, with inertia, in order to get you up and running. Next, please. So this is the end of the presentation. This is the end of the slides. Um, I am very interested and eager on hearing uh, what you have to say, the questions that you might have. 
you know, I would like to leave you with my presentation and the message that, you know, it is nowadays not a commodity to have a company managing your human capital. It is truly a necessity, mainly because of how it mitigates risks, how it uh, creates cost effective processes within your company. And finally, you can have team members devoted to your product, to your service, to your core business, instead of being worried and frustrated with the entire processes that entail managing your human capital within your company. So Taide, thank you for uh, the invite. There's a lot more information that can be shared once it's needed by any one of your members um, of the association. We are passionate about this. I also wanna share that uh, we have a specific team devoted to the Hispanic market. Everything that I showed you on our portal is uh, in Spanish or in English. We have it in both. And we're really eager to help out, you know, all the members, any member that is interested on hearing more about how to create a very efficient human capital management process within the company. Um, we're willing, we're able. And just to share with you, we have more than 100 proposals out there being managed by our teams in order to, you know, sign the contract service agreement. And then the company's up and ready uh, in about three to four weeks time. Um, this is information that I have to share with you. I am proud to become, um, as Jockey HR, a member of the association. I think that, Taide, what you're doing with e-commerce and helping, you know, our colleagues taking this, their companies online and making sure that they have now two avenues in order to present their products and services face-to-face, -face, but also online, I think it's huge. I think it is definitely the future. Um, those of you who love to study about that have seen the numbers of what it represents e-commerce throughout the world and also mainly in the United States. So it is a huge opportunity. We just have to take a look at Amazon, what has happened with Amazon in the past 10 years. And it is you know, easy to see the value of what you're doing, Taide. So thank you again for the invite and more than excited to be collaborating with you. No, thank you, Juan Carlos. Uh, very informative presentation. I appreciate all the information that uh, you provide to us. Before the, and, and I, I want to remind you, you know, for those folks that have been watching this live, if you have any questions, specific questions about your business or any other question that pops up in your uh, head, just send it over in the chat so we can ask Juan Carlos. But I have one question for you, Juan Carlos. What do you think is the... Uh, the main reason why small businesses take so much time to decide on a service like this? Do you think it's the cost because they think it's expensive or they don't need it? From your experience, what, what would you say? So that, that's a great question. Um, you know, I had this conversation with an owner of a restaurant. He has been doing this for, you know, 28 years now, and he's um, <laughs> opening up his third restaurant. And he mentioned prior to signing with us and, and letting us helping him and service his company, he said, you know what? I was so mistaken. I uh, so mistaken. I thought that I was going to be spending more funds on having this service done by you. But in fact, I'm saving money. So that's what that's that's key. There is this idea that an urban legend that when you go with a consulting or outsourcing company, you're going to be spending more money because you have to pay a fee. What it's not assessed many times is that that fee is not even closely related or correlated to what you spend with having more resources devoted within your company in order to manage all those silos. You know, and another reason is many of the, um, you know, business executives start their business and they think, okay, all I have to do is just, you know, um, get a subscription to one of the online uh, payroll services, um, you know, that are there or, or software. And all I have to do is print checks and send those checks to my employees. But it's so much more than that. So the phrase that I usually use is that they don't know that they don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's a risk. Because if you don't know that you can be liable and that all your revenues of the year can go in a split of a second just with one hospitalization of one of your employees, and not even considering a, a suing situation, right? 
because that can happen as well. Any company can be sued if there is an incident or an accident within the premises and, the, and within working hours. And to, to answer your question, Thayde, truly it has to do with being unaware of the risk, being unaware that there are more solutions out there instead of you doing it by yourself. Now, you probably know this, but in a lot of uh, small businesses and in, uh, in our community and, and across the country, they usually tend to hire uh, family members. So under that situation, do you recommend getting your service or not? Because you would say, you Absolutely. know, it's my primos, you know, it's my uncle. Let me give an example of the esposa, because this is a great example. So this same, rest, this same restaurant owner, the, the person who was managing payroll and, 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 you know, paying in cash to the chef and to the waiters and waitresses was la esposa, okay? So when we started this conversation, la esposa was included on the meetings and, and I felt, I sensed, we sensed that she was feeling she was going to be left out. She was like, hold on a second. <laughs> What's going on? What's happening here? Because I have a job right now. Now this company is going to come in and I'm going to be left out. And in fact, it's the other way around. She loves us now because we help her with the entire process. She just have to go into the portal every bi-weekly pay period, 72 hours prior. The report is already there. She takes up because you need someone in-house that can review the numbers, that knows, okay, this is the payroll. That is, uh, you know, we have these people that uh, that came into the company. These people left the company. This is the PTO. You need someone giving the green light for the calculations that we made. So she does have a job. What happens is that she can now devote time to other things that add value to the business. So, you know, you don't have to let anyone go if you don't want to, but they can add value to the company. Now, where do you see the difference regarding cost and the cost effectiveness is on the rework. When you do things by yourself, when you do things that are not automated, there can be human mistakes, human errors, and all of those costs and all of those have a, a, an expenditure if you don't know exactly what's happening. So by doing everything automated with a system, with a PEO service company, what happens is the mistakes disappear and the rework disappears expenses disappear mm -hmm. and you know just kind of like piggybacking on, on on your comment about paying cash you mentioned a restaurant but i have uh, noticed that as a very common practice in you know companies like uh, landscaping and other contractors like drywall mm -hmm. etc so mm -hmm. what's your recommendation for those small businesses that right now are paying cash to their uh, employees. What are the uh, repercussions of that in the midterm and long term? So the first repercussion has to do with risk. Again, managing and, and, and handling cash all the time. So what happens with us is that we can also help out opening up um, bank accounts with debit cards for their employees in order to send them direct deposits so that they don't have to get a check and then see where they have to change, you know, withdraw their money, change their check, et cetera. We can do direct deposits to all the employees if needed, and we can manage the, the entire activity as well for every pay period, whether it be weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, we can set it up in the system however they need to do it. So, you know, cash management in a business, we see it in the cannabis business uh, here in California. Mm -hmm. It's it's interesting to see that some of the uh, prospects that we have connected with and now are our clients, what they usually did in April tax uh, season, they were bringing their briefcases full of cash to pay taxes to the IRS office, right? Instead of doing things automated, because, you know, we currently have the situation in the United States that cannabis operations in California or a state is legal, whereas on the federal aspect of things, it is not illegal, but it's not, you know, <laughs> said, yes, you can do this type of business. It is done at the state level. So playing around those um, situations, some of the prospects that we've had had have issues on opening up bank accounts, on managing the operation, on handling the cash. And we step in, we come in and we certify the business and then we certify the revenues in cash and then we deposit directly to their accounts and we those, even collect the cash 
in those uh, states where, uh, you know, cannabis is, is legal right now, I noticed uh, a trend of different counties and cities that are trying to be very inclusive uh, in terms of how they issue their license uh, to the folks that own these places. And they want to they wanna have a, a fair representation of, of minority entrepreneurs within the cannabis uh, business. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad that you touch on, on, on this uh, industry because I would like you to tell our audience that your company can deal with uh, cannabis business, mm-hmm. uh, dispensaries, anyone that is in the industry. We know that it's high risk, but JobFit can offer all these services to them, correct? Absolutely. So, um, you know, very, let, let me step back a little and just share with you that within the United States, there is about six to eight big payroll services companies that offer, you know, um, activities and operations throughout the United States, six to eight. Currently, we're number three. We're sitting in number three. But none of them offer services to cannabis industry, okay? Because they're public companies and they don't want to touch that, that sector for any reason that they might have. In our case, uh, we're a privately held company. We have decided and the owners and the board have decided that yes, we want to add value to this industry. And what has happened in the past four years is that we currently have hundreds of cannabis clients within our system, within our operations. And you know, th- this industry suffers from cash handling and management. Another aspect has to do the, with workers' compensation, mm-hmm. and another aspect has to do with benefits that are offered to the employees. We truly can manage any type of company. Yes, I have to say that the first pr- step of the process would be completing a due diligence activity with our prospect company, which means going there, visiting, making sure that the company is you know, financially stable, that is compliant with all the regulatory framework for the state, and federal. And once we have certified that the company is viable for a service, we complete the entire process that I showed you in one of the slides. We go there, we manage everything, we input all the information for the employees, and we specify and design a an operation for the cash management and the cash relationship with the bank. So we currently have bank relationships so that we can present and introduce that company with the banks that we bank with so that they can open their bank accounts there and we can manage the cash to them. So just imagine um, one of the dispensaries that you mentioned. There's one in LA, in fact, that could be doing, you know, a million dollars a day in cash and they have all the cash sitting there, right? So what we would do is we would set up and design a recollection process where every 72 hours we go there, we recollect the cash with one of our providers for that type of service we certify that cash and we deposit it to their bank account. So everything is streamlined and it's a lot easier than managing cash and, and, and uh, you know, briefs. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in what states uh, do you offer these services to the cannabis industry? So we can do this process on every single state that has um, cannabis as a legal operation. Okay. Period. Perfect. That's good to know. Mm-hmm. Now, um, we have a question here for for a small business that is already doing the uh, uh, payroll, you know, through a company. What other services do you usually recommend for a business that has like less than 10 employees besides payroll? Uh, what do you mean other type of businesses? Um, I'm sorry, like other the services, th- other, like the other services that you have on, under your uh, portfolio. Oh. Oh, understood. Understood. Mm-hmm. So for, for this um, executive that is sharing this information, if I may answer this question. So, you know, within the different uh, within the umbrella of services, the spectrum of the basic services to the most complete services. Let's just say that on the left hand side, you have payroll only, which means we only manage payroll. We just get a report from you on how much we have to pay your employees and we pay those employees. On the other side of the spectrum is what we call PEO, which includes the entire bundle and the entire package, which is managing wages, salaries, taxes, benefits, and workers' compensation. Based on that, um, 
I'm, I'm, I believe that this executive, what he might be wanting to know is, if I already have payroll only services through a provider, what do I have to do in order to get the other services? So this is a great question. What we usually do when someone manages a payroll for one of our prospects is we go in, at, we know all of them, in fact, <laughs> most of them, of the big ones, and we know the processes are almost the same, not the same benefits and the same premium because of the prices that we have and the service that we have. But what we would do is we would go in and request some information from them and then transfer all that info into our system. So we do a plug-in, we do a switch off, switch on, we choose the date in between three to four weeks time, and we just wait for the last payroll managed and paid through the other provider. We choose that date, and then we do the switch on within our system. That is a process that the implementation team manages, and it is seamless. We guide the company throughout the entire process. Now, uh, today, let me use this um, opportunity to mention and to answer a question that I'm going to ask myself, as if any executive would ask it, why with you? If there are, you know, seven other big ones and many regional ones, why do business and why let you service us as Jobfit HR? There is one specific answer that you can see time and time again, and it has to do with customer service. If you go to one of the big ones, what usually happens is if you need some assistance, support, HR support, changes in your reporting, you are you have to call an 800 line or you have to send an email to a generic email with us we assign a um account manager client relations that's the name that we um have um decided for these resources and what happens is that you have as the as a company as a client the direct phone number of that employee and they respond to you and act upon what you need immediately so customer service is key and you don't get that with the big ones and the regional ones, they don't have the leverage or they don't have the manpower in order to respond quickly and efficiently. That is the sweet spot where we land, which is a private company with the flexibility and the passion for customer service. Um, you mentioned about, I mean, I'm sorry, you mentioned the, uh, that you, right now you guys are waiving the set of fee implementation fee, implementation yes. fee. So besides that, are there any other like upfront costs that a small business need to incur to transfer no. from one company to you guys? Zero. Okay. No, no, there, there is no hidden fees, costs, or prices. Uh, you know, the owner, just, just to share with you a bit, the owner of the entire enterprise. So like I mentioned, I manage one of the divisions, right? One of the, um, um, uh, what of the 28 that create this huge enterprise? <clears throat> the owner arrived uh, in Miami in una balsa from mm. Cuba when he was six years old. Okay. That's how he began his history and his adventure in the United States. And out of savviness, out of passion, out of, you know, wanting to just create something for himself and his family. He just started studying by himself. He wasn't able to study uh, at an academic level and just started realizing that he had a way to add value and to learn things in the human resources arena. You know, 35 years later, he has this huge conglomerate with 28 divisions. The reason why I'm mentioning this is that this is a very human human being. <laughs> he is an owner and a board that care about the employees and care about the customers. So that game about hidden fees, hidden costs, let's try to squeeze as much as we can right now, doesn't serve us because it doesn't serve you. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't serve you, after 12 months of contract, you're gonna be thinking, how can I leave these guys? Because they're always just looking and seeing how they can squeeze more funds out of me. It's just not our philosophy, it's not the culture that we have in the company. And in fact, that is the reason why um, you know, clients that are currently with other providers are migrating to us. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that you shared uh, that story because, you know, it kind of like his philosophy trickles down all the way to the 28 different units that are across the country. So that's a good philosophy right there. So, you know, we're kind of like almost at the end of our 
hour here and I want to be respectful of your time, but I want to say that, you know, I, I really love like the platform that you guys have. I mean, the, the fact that you have make it so convenient that you have made it so convenient for small businesses to track everything on their mobile device or their laptop computer. That's golden because you have information in real time. And if you are a small business owner, you know, all those metrics at the end of the day, they help to they help you to keep, you know, improving your uh, operation. The other thing that I like is the, uh, the ecosystem that you have created with the different vendors that collaborate with you. And that's kind of like what we're trying to do here with the uh, U.S. Business Association of E-Commerce and the Hispanic Chamber of E-Commerce is create an ecosystem of different uh, vendors and providers that can provide uh, resources to the small business community that are part of this uh, online ecosystem so they can benefit from, you know, HR services and hosting and accounting services, etc. So I think that what you have created with your company is uh, very valuable and, and also that you are serving, you know, small or micro businesses to all the way to multi-million dollar operations. That flexibility mm -hmm. is really good too. Customer service, again, is top priority, especially if you are in the smaller side of the spectrum where you don't have time to be sitting on a, on a, on a phone call for like an hour to yeah. handle a business that is going to take you probably like 30 seconds. I mean, time is money and we all know that. So all those good things, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned them. And, you know, it's always good to have options, you know, in the uh, in the marketplace because every dollar counts. And if we can save time and money within our, our operation, it's time um, and money that we can use for marketing, that we can use for other areas within the company if we are planning to keep uh, growing our operation. So thank you so much, uh, Juan Carlos, for sharing all this information. Anything else that you would like to add before we leave? I mean, anyone that would have questions, specific questions, um, anyone that would like to have a face-to-face, -face, a um, video conference call to review and assess, you know, the invitation is that uh, they would allow us to just show them a comparison of what they do today to what would happen in paper if they would allow us to help them out with their human capital management processes. So anyone that would be interested, please make sure um, that I to share the, the last slide uh, with my information. So let me just give you my, um, yeah, there is my email address and my phone number. You can call me there. You can send an email there. And, um, you know, we're here to help. We just want to add value. We just want to help out and um, grow together and and your your unit just so people know uh, have an office in florida and texas and california but you can serve Correct. anyone across the street right we can serve anyone nationwide nationwide perfect well juan carlos thank you thank you very much uh for sharing all this information this is one of those sensitive topics that is extremely important for small business owners, but sometimes we neglect it just because we feel like we have everything under control. But you just share some good examples throughout your presentation that we have to be careful because a, a tiny mistake can cost us a lot of money, right? Absolutely. As you know, risk is, is, is huge. Uh, becoming liable without insurance is huge. Plus many states don't even allow it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that you have to take care of if you're an employer and you have at least one employee hired. Um, we can help with that. Perfect. Well, thank you, Juan Carlos. I appreciate it. Um, have a gracias. nice afternoon. And muchas gracias to everyone that uh, watches us live. Remember, share this information with any of your colleagues, friends that you think that they can benefit from it. And thank you, thank you very much for those that watch us live and thank you to those that watch this recording later. Thank you everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.